that brings us to the end of Umaguma. So, Ooh. so Callum, your overall thoughts on the album? Real good album. This is a really um. I guess it's, it's, it's like I said, even though it's cl like I said, classic Pink Floyd, but this one especially was a lot of very interesting ex experimentation and I really appreciated it all. And a lot of just really good, like, performances, I think, is a really good theme for this. Like, in terms mm. of, like, especially the the, the live one we w uh, listened mm. to, how, because I mentioned it, how much it sounds like it was made in a studio and not performed live was like pretty insane it's like, because it's just the music and the talent of the artists is just on another on another level yeah like in terms of an album this is a just a real 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 good and it's a good one mm. and did you like the concept they went for where they went half live and then they went half uh standalone pieces yeah, it was like really, really good stuff from all of them individually. And the other mm. half being like live performances really shows off like this is really good music and it's like it's really well performed. And the and way they expand on it too. Yeah, that much nowadays, something like this that sounds this good. This is a real shame. Yeah, but ironically. Yeah, given this is a real, real, real good album kind of ironic given how like um technologically difficult it was to put stuff like this together given how much atmosphere this album has is insane like the way it's able to use the sound mixing to take you to other places and draw images in your head mm, yeah. it's like the fact that they're using 1960s technology it's pretty crazy a lot of music around this time whilst it's great it sounds very tinny um I don't mean like ten who's in this call. I mean like the sort of you know. I, I, I was gonna fucking say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you sound great. No, I'm talking about the um. I mean like it's a lot. A lot of it's very like compressed and it's very um. You can tell it's old, especially when you listen to. I guess if you listen to like a couple of their singles that aren't that well mastered, like Point Me at the Sky, for example. That kind of gives a sort of an example of what I mean. But when you listen to a lot of music from the time, a lot of it has this very distinct, this is made from this time period, unless you search out the very high end of this genre, for example, with like Pink Floyd and some of the other artists around that time, like the Beatles and whatnot. It provides this kind of before its time sound mixing that let, makes it age really well when you listen to it in these remastered formats that we have um it still sounds so good and so clear and that's yeah i think omaguma doesn't get enough credit for that how much atmosphere it still has to this day and your overall thoughts on omaguma well the thing is, the thing, the phrase I saw throw around, like, especially when we're talking about early soul Pink Floyd, is how, like, they're getting so closer to the sort of, you know, what people think of when they think of Pink Floyd, like Dark Side, Moon sort of stuff, but I think, like, in terms of the earlier stuff, this is the most of, this is what, this is the closest I get to, like, being sort of, like, I guess, like, you know, classic Pink Floyd, where everyone Thinks of so like, especially with the experimentation, especially with the live versions, which, again, as Callum pointed out, they actually sound like they're performed in a studio, which, gotta say, is impressive. Because of course, I have like I've, I've listened to, like the the I get well, newer albums, but the ones after this one, and like they use like a lot of pieces aren't necessarily like songs, but less just. Like just stand, st as, as you say, standalone pieces, and like especially one with like a bunch of fairy creatures gathering in a cave with a, with a bunch of p picks. Close, close enough. Like <laughs> just mm. like that. That just being Roger Waters yelling at a bunch of animals with a fly. <laughs> just like 
S somehow that works on, on a Pink Floyd album, and it works really well. I was just going to say, it kind of defies ex everything you think music is, really. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> like, on like, see it like, and like any other album from like this sort of time period, like a Rolling Stone Stones album, it would sound totally out of fucking nowhere. Whereas here, it it's tame in compar in, in comparison to some of their stuff. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but like, yeah, this album's really, really good. I, I, lo I, I love a lot of the songs, especially the live versions. They were really, really good. Mm. And even some of the just standalone pieces, like some of the tracks are just absolutely fucking beautiful to listen to. So yeah, absolutely, just really good. A really good album, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sky, your turn. I I really love this album. It's a really interesting one. I think it's just like songs that I've added to my playlist because that's, you know, every time I hear some song, I'm like, oh, I'd like to hear this more often. I just add it to my playlist. Um, I think this is the one that I've added the least amount of songs. Uh, I think especially because of the nature of it being, you know, multiple parts for many of yep. the songs. It's a bit awkward uh, to add them, isn't it? Because they're just these chapters and stories. Yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes it kind of annoys me when I'm listening to like the song from um, "The Wall" comes up or um, yeah, from uh, "Dark Side of the Moon." Remember my playlist because I'm like, "Fuck!" It cut off halfway. But anyway, yeah. Um, however, I do really feel like it's a really fantastic album. Like on a on a concept level, I think it's really really cool to mm. give this kind of like freedom to each of the members to just like test it out. Be like, you know, what? let's see what we can do uh, with this setting everyone can do um their own song uh it can be as long as they want like fucking three parts and like seven minutes in the middle for the last one for example um so you know pink floyd giving themselves a lot of freedom to explore is something i really love which it does come uh, show how a lot of a lot of them are like the influence they've had on the future because i'm more familiar with their future albums uh how like each of them has like a, a big influence on the band just as a whole uh and their own sound and uh i guess storytelling abilities with their songs which is really cool um as well as just the fact that the songs are just bangers really really good to listen to um especially uh then the narrow way which is definitely my favorite from the album and uh yeah obviously also because you all mentioned but the live versions of the songs you'd heard previously are phenomenal uh, somehow even better than the original, so yeah, Pink Floyd is just really great. Yeah, yeah, I like what you said about um, showing off what they can do as individuals, because you know from here onwards they come back together um, for a lot of their songs. Like you get to see them be like, right, we've now established what we can do as individuals. Now let's come back together as a band and expand even further as a, as a unit. Jeb, your thoughts on Omegoma? Um, I really like the album. I find it very interesting that the band does not like this album, kind of at all. And I did really like the point made by Sky about how we're seeing that individual components of what they bring to the band. Um, especially um, Mason. No, Waters, not Mason, sorry. I meant Waters, <laughs> um, especially Waters, because that's where my favourite period is for this album. It's very, there's a lot of layers to it as well, and uh, that's why I think also in terms of their disco, disco, music, I think I'll just go with music. Discography, yeah. Yeah, um, it's why a lot of people don't seem to be on this, um, board with this one, because I think it requires a lot more thought and attention rather than you could kind of listen, sit back. But, once you really pay attention and look at all the la layers to the songs and also envision yourself in some of them, such as Grand Vizier's Garden Party, it really shows how tired they are, not just as individuals, but as a band and where the future is going for them. So yeah, I'm on board with us. Oh yeah. Yeah, this this is a, an underrated gem. Um, it showcases how good they are in in their prime at live performances it showcases how well each member can hang hang on to 
you know, excellence by themselves. They can tell a narrative story. It shows them establishing how they will do concept albums in the future because they establish how they can execute interlinking tracks, how they can do smart transitions that aren't just, you know, a crossfade. Like, you've got an actual narrative reason for why the song changes in some cases. Like a fly mm -hmm. being swatted or a what Callum <laughs> seems to think is a tube train arriving. Um, yeah. or, um, yeah. or, you know, like, uh, the Grand Vizier's people have arrived and now they're about to do a presentation. Or, say, um, Sisyphus has tried to roll the boulder and now everything's crashing down. And it's just, there's so much genius storytelling in here. There's so much just to dig from this in terms of narrative play, in terms of subtext, in terms of instrumentation, experimentation, um, and just, it's so interesting to listen to, and I think it's severely underrated, and, like, whenever I see, um, people do reviews of Pink Floyd, they're always like, now, I think we can unanimously agree that Ilma is the worst one, and I'm just like, now, hold on there, hold on there, partner. <laughs> Why did you do an American accent? You're calling Americans <laughs> out? Like, oh... <laughs> Well, I mean, because the they don't understand. Big I mean, I mean, I was gonna say the majority of people that I've seen shit on this album are American, but that's not true. There's <laughs> been a lot of British people that have it too, so none of uh, you are see, safe. You're just being, you're just being xenophobic. Okay. That's... I think, it, I think it was the one I most recently saw was American. All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just funny because <laughs> you didn't need to do an <laughs> accent at all, but doing one calling out a specific group. Um, anyway, I mean, sorry. I, I mean, I mean, I think it's, I think it's funnier if I make fun of Americans. I'll just say that. But anyway, oh, I agree. Americans deserve I to love, be made fun of. I, I love making fun of America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you're much better off in Britain. Oh, anyway, yeah. It's it's funny how successful Pink Floyd is in America, given how like anti-American they kind of are in some ways. Mm. Well, they have become kind of, especially Roger Waters, become kind of a symbol of like. I guess counterculture in a way. Um, yeah, being more, especially because Roger Waters did did some shows in Brazil uh, around the time when uh, before uh, around the time where uh, our last election was, uh, where we elected a um, a right wing politician. He was very vocally against him being uh, our next president. Uh, he's very much uh a, a symbol of like a political movement uh i think for a lot of people so mm -hmm. i can kind of see why uh he would become like so popular uh and then like especially you know during like trump times uh, rising in popularity because of that because of how obviously he would call out that kind of shit coming yeah. from uh that side of the political spectrum yeah um of course they very known for their progressive views and whatnot. They all have very different progressive views, but they all lean that way. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, this 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 album is really interesting, really cool, really experimental, um, and it gives you a nice sort of preview of what's to come in, in a lot of ways, which is really exciting. Um, and it's a nice way to cap off the 1960s, because from here we move into the 70s after this Ooh. point and the next batch of songs which would be in the next edar music is split into two halves of songs the first is a bunch of songs that were on a film soundtrack for the film named zabriskie point now pink floyd unlike the more album they weren't the only artists to do music for the film so there's not like you know as many as much music on this of theirs as there is the the more film but um they did do they were one of the artists that did quite a few songs on it so we'll be listening to some of the songs off that film and then the second half is the fifth album which is called atom heart mother and it has this album cover this iconic album cover with the cow on it Oh yeah, I know that album, man. Yeah. yeah. It's very recognizable in a record shop because you just see that cow staring into your soul. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, Callum, your thoughts on 
going into the the Zabriskie Point soundtrack and the Atom Heart Mother album. Well, it'll be interesting to see um, the comparison between like the soundtrack that they did for that other film they did. Mm -hmm. More. I what it was called. More. It's called More. More. Okay. And then comparing it to this one, see how different it is and see what mm. vibe they. I can. Of, I can tell you for a fact, Zabriskie Point is a lot is a lot more popular than More. Like it's a much more critically acclaimed film. Um, right. I I think more is ten genuine like generally considered bad. Zabriskie Point's more like divisive. It's quite it's quite a, right. it's quite a divisive film, um, but the clips I've seen of it, it looks way better than more by comparison. Hmm. Not definitely, a high bar. Um, definitely, but, definitely, yeah, definitely, high bar. definitely higher production values. I can say that much. It's much higher production values. Again, not a high bar, but yeah, yeah. And then obviously with the um, album, I'm just looking forward to seeing what wacky things they get up mm. to next. Yes, well... It's, it's not Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it sounded like you're describing a family show. Mm. Well, I mean, the, the, one, the one thing I can tell you about Atom Heart Mother, obviously they, um, the, the band members are much more together on the next album than they were here. Mm. You know, they're back at being a band again in the studio stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. the the one el like sort of element that is that defines Atom Heart Mother is it has an orchestra and a brass band. Oh, which is very very the only the only song that really there's only a couple of songs that really have that before this point like Jug Band Blues and Corporal Clegg have some of mm -hmm. that in it to some extent, but this. Um, most of this album utilizes that i think well actually no it's not it's not i guess okay you'll you'll find out but this album <laughs> on it some of it uses orchestra and brass band and that's what it's remembered for 10 sky or jeb any thoughts about what's to come on zabriskie uh, point and atom heart mother i, 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 like you. I, I, um, I hope we can understand why they have a cow in the in the cover that's the one thing I hope to achieve by listening to the album. I'll do my research if you yeah. like. I very much need it needed. Uh, otherwise, I'm not coming back after that. I just have to know. Okay. It's the cow. I'm excited. I don't know. Uh, listening to another soundtrack, as uh, Column said, would be interesting compared to more. Because uh, I was checking when I mentioned that, uh, you know, this album was the one that I added the least to my playlist. More was actually the album that I added the most, the More soundtrack. Mm. So I'm curious to see if it is going to be as good as that soundtrack was, because it was just a phenomenal soundtrack. Yeah, the, un unfortunately, there's no Glug Snore on Zabriskie Point. It does, it does have that going against it. Oh, so already fighting yeah. an uphill battle, but everybody loves another <laughs> dog. The thing that's potentially a bit interesting uh, for those of you who have heard their later stuff there's pieces from the Zabriskie the Zabriskie Point soundtrack that gets reused in other albums mm -hmm. which is really interesting specifically um there's one song on Zabriskie Point that has a bit of Atom Heart Mother in it there's also a piano section huh? from Zabriskie Point that gets reused in the Dark Side of the Moon oh um but I don't think I've included that because I don't want to spoil Callum on that piece. I want him to hear it for the first time when he hears Dark Side. So mm -hmm. I've, I haven't included that one. But that is a bit of trivia for that album anyway, for that um, soundtrack. Um, I'm very excited for the people to hear the songs, um, especially in Out of Smasher. Um, I know, again, the band will, later on became less vocal with it but it's still such an excellent album yeah the, the, uh, i think this next album out of Heart mother is the biggest case of death to the author i would ever apply to this band because yes. they they do not like this album and they're wrong <laughs> they're very <laughs> wrong very very wrong because this album is fucking brilliant that's all we've got for this Cedar music. Thank you all for joining and enjoying Omagoma. Hopefully, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to the very um to all the backlash we get in the comment section because I know a lot of people hate Omagoma and they they just I think misunderstand it. 
Um, so yeah, have fun with your keyboards of that, <laughs> if you will. And um, yeah, we'll see you all next time for Zabriskie Point and Atom Heart Mother. Bye. 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 Bye.